Hello and welcome back to the Shepherd's Crook Podcast. Hope you guys are doing great today. You're going to have to deal with some nasaliness again today. I mentioned this also in the interview that I did a couple days ago that's going to release here in a week or two. We have hit with another round of sickness in our home. And man, I tell you what, and I've heard from so many of you and so many people at our church that have had wave after wave of sickness this year. And it just seems to be the way it is. I have just got another sort of sickness and it's just all in my sinuses, my head. And our family hopefully is now on the backside of this thing. We will see. But that's what we're praying for. That's what we're hoping for. But I am back with some content today. And hopefully you can bear with me with my voice and the nasaliness of it. We're going to talk about manhood, power, authority, and rule today. I'm going to give you a little bit of a highlight of what's coming down the pipeline. And then we're going to talk about this. And all the usual reminders are out there. Also, uh, next month, starting next month, just in February for the whole month, we're going to be talking about the intensive. I want you guys to be a part of that if you can. A.D. Robles is going to be speaking at that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'd love to have you there. Um, here's what we're going to do with Shepherd's Crook the next few episodes. I do this every once in a while, just kind of announce in advance what I'm going to be talking about, but I've been jotting down some notes. So here are the next few episodes. We're going to be talking about what I said today. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about virtual re- virtual reality and the danger of it. And what I want to do is just give some caution and I think some guided predictions of where things are going with virtual reality and some cautions that I think we need to have in place. The next week, I'm going to be talking about vaccines and the importance of being informed about vaccines and a lot of their dangers. I've been doing some really good reading over the last year or so that I want to tell you about and get into your mind to be thinking through and pray, praying through. If you don't have children yet, or if you're you know, going into every year and you used to get your flu vaccines and all this kind of stuff, just want to give you some information about that. And then uh, I will be releasing also a sermon that I preached a few years ago at our church about the the liberty of conscience, vaccine mandates, and all that kind of stuff. And it will be a little bit dated, but the content I think is going to be really helpful for you to be able to think through as a complimentary resource for what I'm going to be putting out on vaccines. And then finally, I'm going to be talking about the difference between being a scoffer and godly discernment that speaks publicly about public public manners. I've been working through this with Jordan, thinking through not wanting to be a scoffer, and yet being required by God to have discernment and speak publicly about things that need to be publicly addressed. For instance, when you approach Alistair Begg and say that he is wildly out of line, and if he doesn't repent, we need to stop listening to him because he said, go to a tran, you know, a tranny quote, end quote wedding. He needs to be corrected for that publicly. And when you speak to him in that sort of way, there is a difference between being a scoffer, scoffing him, and even the difference between scoffing and holy mockery. And so I'm still kind of working through that. So I put that out several weeks from now. I want to be able to put that into your hands and, and help you out with that. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. And then we're going to talk about power, rule, authority, manhood, men. God has given you power. He's given you power to rule. And it is inevitable. And it's in every man, no matter what, no matter where you are, and no matter what generation or era, you have power. And we have got to wield it as God has called us to wield it. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this time. I ask for blessing upon these next few minutes. I want to be encouraging. I want to be helpful to every man that's listening in, every woman that's listening in. God, I pray that she would feel protected and 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 cared for and wouldn't feel that she needs to have some sort of power that you've not given her. Pray for every man. I pray that he would not give his strength to women and that he would understand what that means, that he would not give away what you have uniquely given to him. And so help us to step up into the power and the authority that you have given and bestowed upon us. We trust you're going to help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Talking about manhood and womanhood is never going away. It's not going away because we have to grow as Christians in a in gendered manner. We have to grow as godly men. You have to grow as a godly woman if you're a woman. And so talking about manhood and womanhood in a biblical manner isn't going away. It's just a part of our sanctification. This show is going to be devoted to talking about biblical manhood for the rest of my life that I'm doing this. Lord willing, I want to do this the rest of my life. And Jordan's show is going to be devoted for the rest of her life, Lord willing, to talking about biblical womanhood. And as I'm raising my sons on the Sons and Slaves podcast, we're going to be talking about developing from boyhood to manhood and addressing the power that God has given us and seeing that 
come out in good and healthy ways to those that are around us and not in aggressive or, uh, you know, sinfully aggressive and negative ways to those who are around us. So it's just not going anywhere. We're going to keep talking about manhood, keep talk, talking about womanhood. And so today we're talking about power, rule, and authority. There's just some basic premises that are biblical that I'm going to throw out there. And then we're going to look at a couple of Bible verses, but I want to make some statements and just spend some time thinking about them and, and help, hopefully help you think through them as well. And when I just say this, that men have authority, men have power. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? If you've been trained by, you know, the 2000s or in the late 90s kind of, uh, you know, mentality, if you've been trained trained, trained by just secularism or progressive thought at all, which we've all grown up in, we, we just all grew up in that, that secular state, then that statement alone brings up several questions and you wonder, well, where is this biblically? And, and then you start to read the Bible and you realize, oh my goodness, it's everywhere. To even ask the question, where is this biblically is just a funny question. We see it everywhere from the garden forward, not from the fall forward, from the garden forward. Adam was created first, then Eve, and God bestowed authority upon him based on that created order and how he designed the man to be. He designed him physically stronger. That To argue to the contrary is absurd. He's made us with our minds, brains, uniquely fit for leadership in a unique way that God has, has made for us to lead in the home, the church, and in the world. This is marked on all of creation, and it's marked in all of the pages of the Bible. This is just absolutely clear. Men have authority. Men have power. It's given by God. The fall makes this more difficult. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 2 appeals back to the pre-fall state of Adam to say why he's authoritative over Eve in the church and why God has called only men to be elders and deacons within the church, elders in particular, is because of this created order. Men or Women are not to have because of their gullibility, and, and men have their sin propensities, but one of the sin propensities of ladies is the the, the way that they're easily deceived. And when, if you're triggered by that, it's because you're easily deceived. Lady, listening in, men from the garden forward have power. But in Genesis chapter 3, what we're told when women are laid down their, uh, their consequences for the fall, you know, men have their consequences, uh, which are the ground cursed, earth is cursed, tornadoes are because of uh, man's fall, thorns and thistles shall bear fruit for you, and you shall eat plants in the field by the sweat of your face, you shall eat your bread. I mean, we know the consequences to the man. The consequences to the woman is the multiplied pain in childbearing. It is a contrary desire. Your desire shall be for or against or contrary to your husband, and he shall rule over you. And this is another aspect of the consequence is that rule now, he shall rule over you. It's not just that the ruling is the consequence, but now this rule is going to be marred and twisted by sinful men, men who are born in the sins of Adam. And they take that ruler rulership, they take that authority, and it comes out in all sorts of wicked ways. And we all know the wicked ways seen from the garden forward of men. They take this, this power and this authority, this rule, and they're always going to rule over women. They're always going to be rulers in this world. They're always going to be rulers in the church. But because of the fall, the consequence is that this rulership, this authority is so much more difficult to wield in a godly and a healthy manner. It requires submission to King Jesus. It requires understanding what sacrificial love, sacrificial rule, sacrificial power, sacrificial lordship looks like. It requires submission to Jesus as him, our submission to Jesus as our federal head. This is what's required for us to rule well. It means we have to be a submissive man to the word of God. And we'll work through some of this. But every man, without exception, has this power, has this rule, has this authority. It's seen everywhere. Even the very passive man, the passive man is taking his power and he's still using his power to destroy people. That's why a passive man also has a wake of damage. It's not just the overly aggressive man. It's not just the man. Hold on one second. I'm going to tell Ransom to stop playing piano for a second. Not right now, buddy. I'm doing my, my podcast. Love you. Boy, I'm, I'm really glad that Ransom's learning the piano and the guitar. He's doing such a great job with school, but we've got to work on, on timing. Okay, let me correct this uh, camera here. The passive man has a wake of damage like the aggressive man who's ruling with his physical strength and dominating women around him or harming people around him. It's the same kind of thing. It, it's it's power expressing itself in different ways in that passivity or power expressing itself in in that that sinful aggression. But the, the passive man has power and he's wielding it really, really bad. He's got God-given power to rule, to take dominion, to push Eden out 
and he is using it in a in in a, in a sinful manner and in a way that's destroying people. But he's still powerful nonetheless. This is why men get so sucked into video games. Um, and and I'm talking about a sinful obsession with video games. It's because they want to rule so bad. They they want to rule. It's in them. God has given them. And so that rule, that power, that authority is going to come out. That aggression is going to come out somewhere. And therefore, it comes out in video games. That's why there is an obsession with video games, because men have power. And they get to rule. They get to dominate. They get to lead. They get to sacrifice. They get to have this valiant, uh, you know, quest for honor and glory. And they do that through through the fantasy world. That's there. What, what about the, the man who's got a woman and he's given his strength to a woman? That man's aggression, that, that man's power is going to come out in other ways. He can't stand up to his wife, but he'll stand up in really weird ways to other people. So really weird things will trigger him. A man who who is married to a woman that is a Karen or a woman that has all this this power, and she wears the pants. What, what, what you'll see in that kind of man is he gets triggered by really weird things. So he gets really upset with politics. You know, he, he doesn't like Donald Trump. He hates Donald Trump. He hates men with authority. He's a feminist. He loves being a feminist and promoting women. And he gets really upset and defensive and aggressive and aggressive over really weird things where you're like, bro, like, what's wrong? Why, why is that bothering you? And why are you really upset about that particular thing? Because that aggression, that rule, that authority is going to come out somewhere. Just it's inevitable because God has given him and bestowed upon him power. That is what God has done. And that, that sinful aggression has got to be checked as well. That sinful aggression, you'll see a man who is really aggressive in, in, in all the wrong ways. And his wife walks around and you can tell that she is exhausted. She is, you know, you, you can tell the godliness of a man by the countenance of his wife. And she's just beat down. And she's not free at all. She's not living in the joy of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because this man is domineering and he dominates everything in his life. He has power, he has control, and he's not wielding it well. He's ruling over her in an evil manner. He's ruling over the church in an evil manner. This is, you know, pastor little man syndrome. He 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 uses his his power and authority to destroy people, not to build people up. This happens in the church. It happens in the world as well. And we see it everywhere, the, the damage of men who take that power, authority, and rule and use it in, in bad ways. So what is the right way to do it? What is the godly way to do it? Well, number one, don't give your strength to women. Recognize that God has given you strength, and it's a good thing to be a man. Michael Foster talks about this all the time. Uh, men talk about this all the time who understand what the Bible has done and what God has done in creation itself. In fact, Proverbs 31, 3, do not give your strength to women. Men, do not do this. I am pleading with you. Young men who are not married, do not marry a feminist woman. Do not marry a woman who is going to want to pull the strings, who's not submitted to Christ, and who's not going to be a godly woman. If she's not going to let you lead, if she's not going to let you rule, and if she's not going to let you sacrifice for the family, do not marry her. Let me plead with you over and over. Your life will be miserable, miserable, if you marry an ungodly woman. Now, ladies listening in, if you marry an ungodly man, your life is going to be miserable as well because he has power and he is going to lord his power over you through demanding you step up and do what God is going to give his strength to you. And when a man gives his strength to a woman, it's going to be completely destructive to you. It's going to be completely destructive to any woman that he gives his power to because she's not built for it. Therefore, do not give your strength to women. God has not built them in the same manner as he has built men. He has built women to do other things, to not fear anything that's frightening. Women are glorious things, created in the image of God. Glorious human beings. They're just wonderful. I love my wife and I love my daughter very much. Contrary to some comments that I heard recently of somebody that said, I hate women because I'm, I stand against abortion and uh, the murder of the unborn. And I don't want women to go to war. And somebody commented and they said that uh, I clearly hate, hate women because I want men to fight for women. Okay. All right. Don't give your strength to women. It's sinful to give your strength to women. So what we got to do, what we you have to do, what we have to do, what you got to do, <laughs> sound a little country here, is uh, harness the God-given power. Every man has it. I did an episode a few days about, about harnessing the discipline that you have. Every man has discipline. It's a matter of directing and guiding that discipline, finding that dif discipline and putting it in the right place. In the same way, all men have power, so you have to harness it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to be sanctified as a man, which means bringing that power and that rule under submission to King Jesus. And it needs to be directed. The Holy Spirit directs us of, of how to walk in power, how to walk in authority in the home, the church, and the world. This is what God's called men to do in the home, church, and in the world. Okay? Good men rule sacrificially. They take their lordship, they take their power, and they rule and love in a way the people around them 
are growing in, in their countenance and their joy and the fruit of the spirit. They're growing in their womanhood. They're growing as sons and daughters in a godly man, in a godly manner. Good men rule according to God's law. We submit to God's law. And that's what I want to call you to do. If you have misguided power right now, then put it under the rule of God's word. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to step up into the power that you have. If you are expending all your power, giving away not to women, but you're giving it away to video games and you're expending all your energies there, well, play video games every once in a while. Okay, well, that's one thing. But if all your rule, all your dominion, all of that is going out through the fantasy world of that of, of, of video games, then you're missing a whole world to conquer for the glory of Jesus. And you are a conqueror. We are more than conquerors. What does, that, what does that mean? We are on a global conquest to push and to see the glory of God spread as far as the East is from the West. That's what we want to see. And so don't give your power to women. Don't give it to video games. Step in, up into the power that God has given you and direct it. Find it. Look in your life and just ask, okay, where is power being exercised? Where is this rule revealing itself in my life? And it might be that your rule is revealing itself in your life through that passivity and you're realizing, my goodness, look how powerful I am because I'm destroying a lot of people around me. That, and that's what you just wake up to and you realize, my goodness, I I have this, this power to destroy people by giving my strength away and not stepping up into this power and authority that I have. So find it, look at it, and then direct it, bring it under submission to Jesus, and then start leading and ruling like King Jesus in the home and in the church and in the world. Step up, man. Step up. God calls you to it, and the world needs it. Your family needs it. And so rule. Rule godly in a godly manner and watch the people around you do well. Okay, guys, thanks so much for listening. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.